So, um, yeah, I guess um, my background is the most part generation zero, but before that, I used to be a mechanical engineer for like several years. I worked in, in South Lake for about three and a half years and sort of tried to, um, back then, I guess my career change was try to fix the problem with you know, clean energy and work on piping and all sorts of uh, things. And eventually, I sort of moved into this world of political change via uh, politics, I guess. So I'll uh, sort of give you guys a bit of a backstory of how I sort of went from you know being an engineer to now effectively working in politics and campaigning all the time. Um, it started off, I guess, when I you know why I decided to do engineering. I love cars. Like all my teen years, I used to drop cars at the back of my book and sort of start engineering as this you know oh we have these big problems of fossil fuels and climate change and yep we'll just need to design some electric cars and hydrogen cars. And then we won't have this problem with pollution, and we, everything will be fine. And I was, you know, that's what got me excited. That's why I started doing engineering. And then sometime about, you know, I think halfway through my engineering class, uh, we had this um, university lecturer called uh, Carol Boyle, who was you know, a tiny kind of little lady who sort of rode to work every day on rollerblades. And she ran a basically a sustainable engineering class called Doom and Gloom 101, which kind of unloaded on everyone. <laughs> everything that was wrong with the world and it was then that I got to see that actually no just fixing you know just replacing fossil fuel cars with electric cars just means you have bigger factory jams it doesn't actually fix any of the problems that, that we have to deal with you know everyone owns a car you still are stuck with a huge pollution problem so you, you can't build cities this is in China I think a few months uh, months ago just actually a few months ago a few weeks ago around uh, Chinese New Year they sort of everyone moves around and you have a traffic jam that lasts several days. Uh, and you know, that's a consequence of, uh, of that sort of thinking that we can just fix everything with technology and you don't have to think, uh, you don't think about things from a systems perspective. And I guess that's when I made the transition to thinking about things systemically and how you actually need to change the system if you want to create real change and you can't just swap one thing out for another. Uh, that obviously didn't last very long because I eventually got involved in you know, all right, how do you change the system? Okay, we're not going to change the system by just um, changing the technology. We have to actually go and understand why it's like that. And usually it's a case of, all right, that means you're getting more politics at local level, how are decisions made? And you know, this is a good example of that. Urbanism is really saying that, okay, if you want to reduce pollution, we need other ways of getting people out. We need to bring life back to our cities. We need to create a sense of place. We need to create new communities. And that's, I guess, when I got involved in the whole, you know, sort of Generation Zero style of urbanism and, and trying to create change from, uh, we are reshaping our cities, we are public transport, we are walking, cycling, and also creating change on our, uh, changing local politics, changing how decisions are made. Uh, because, you know, and from there, I guess, we, I realized that, oh, actually, how do we make this change? We can mobilize lots of people. Got in the idea of organizing and, and actually made the transition to politics around then. So how do we actually bring people together? We need better messaging, we need better online systems, and uh, you need to start building an organization. And that's, uh, so have you guys, I'm guessing people have already talked about building an organization quite a bit today. So it's the idea that you, know, you don't just go in there and bring all these people together and create a rent them off and then you create change. You have to build long, the long lasting change. You need to actually create agency. You need to give people this idea that um, they have a say and that they, they're part of society and that if they to get involved in local politics, get involved in national politics, get involved in their communities, it's actually uh, it's a, it's a much more intentional and much deeper connection. And if you actually want long lasting change, you can't just rely on sort of, you know, the next tradition to create change, you actually have to build organization, you have to build, um, you have to give agency back to communities who don't believe their voice matters, and that's actually one of the hardest things I found is that most people don't believe they have a say, especially if you're young people, especially in um, ethnic communities. They just they're the ones who are the most again and are the, most, the worst off in the current system, but they also believe at least that their um, their voice matters. And a large part of how we create change is actually giving them agency and helping them create change themselves, and not trying to tell them what the answer is. So that's almost where my theory of change is right now, actually. It sits within, within um, what is local and what is international. Because, um, yeah, 
the other side of that part is that, you know, while it's great to get involved in global politics and creating local change, a lot of the decisions that affect us are made over there internationally. They're made, made by world leaders, they're made in, on Wall Street, and you're not going to change them um, by getting a new cycle way down uh, the table or whatever. You actually have to find a way of connecting on a global scale, and you actually have to come up with new ideas. Because it's great that we oppose the DPP, but what's our alternative that inspires people? And that's, I think, something many people have brought up. So that sort of sums up my theory of change ideas, which is collective action, but a subset of that is building organization on the ground and also creating new ideas that are the alternatives to sort of neoliberal processes. Because if you don't have those alternatives, it doesn't matter how much organization you have, you're not going to create change. And if you don't have those new ideas, so it's, you need both. Um, but, sort of stepping right back out again a bit, um, one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately is how much of my career of change and my journey is more coincidence and result of the people I was hanging out with and what I've studied and who I was around uh, than it was actually something intentional. How much of it is me sort of post rationalizing things I started doing because I didn't really think about them. Uh, because I, just because I went to these climate change negotiations and met the international climate movement, I actually got involved climate change. That was actually something intentional. And, and that's where I think um, this, uh, it's, yeah, this is where the debate gets interesting, I guess, because you know, if, let's say, I was born in the US and I started up PayPal by some great coincidence and then sold PayPal and made a few billion dollars and then started up an electric car company, and then a rocket company. My fear of change would probably be quite different. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, I'm not saying the fear of change is wrong. It's actually great. We do need electric cars, but we also need urbanism. We do need to look at what we're doing. We do need we do need to look at space travel. It's, you know, a lot of human innovation comes from sort of space travel. And uh, his I, his thing is not wrong, but it's also based on the, his situation and uh, his situation and the people he was around and what happened to him that he, that he ended up doing what he did. So it's, you know, just as I made the decisions of Faraj, based on, you know, how I went to engineering, a couple of coincidences could have sent me down a completely different path. And, you know, it makes no sense for him to go, well, electric action is the way to go. I'm going to give up trying to create this car company and, uh, and you know, make electricity cheap for everyone instead of going to go and try and make light rail down San Francisco. It makes no sense for him to do that. He's much more effective at doing what he's doing than doing than working in other places, and I guess this is uh, sort of the real thing. You know, I, there are boys. Uh, this is a little conversation we had last night. If your skill was making great music and connecting with people, you should pursue that path because that's how you that's how you inspire people. That's how you create change. But I don't want to sound like I'm saying that collection, uh, collective action doesn't matter, and you should always you know pursue your dreams and do what. Um, do what you know, do what you enjoy and makes you happy, mostly because of this guy. <laughs> it's you know, it's, it's great that some people are fantastic what they do and they manage to inspire a lot of people, but then there are people like Kanye West who think they're good at stuff, but well, actually his music is pretty good, but he's not about to change the world. Now, compare that to Kendrick Lamar, who is actually become a great inspiration for the Black Lives Matter movement and is, and is actually creating social change. So I guess the question is more, you know, do what you're doing but also have a bit of a reality check? Yeah. <laughs> In that, you know, are you, are you Kanye or are you Kendrick? Is the real one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, and just, you know, I've been Donald Trump actually, he's doing, uh, he's, he's, he's creating change, he's working with something. So it's, it's more about having a bit of a reality check, but also pursuing what you're actually good at. So if you're good at making music, do what you're doing. If you're good at starting a business and creating electric vehicles, keep doing that. If you're good at organizing people politically, keep doing that. And it's probably not going to stay the same all your life. You're probably going to switch from being involved in local politics at one stage in your life, and then another stage in your life, you might end up in a business. Another stage in your life, you might get to music. Who knows? So it's about, I guess, Doing, making the most of the situation in, and actually being a little bit humble about it, <laughs> about your abilities. 
So yeah, that's uh, my page. Hopefully that helps. <laughs>